everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I want to take a little bit of a review over the MD Expo that we just finished off April 16th and 17th in Dallas, Texas. There's a couple categories that I think we need to mention. And one of them is going to be the best networking, and that is the personal networking. And that's going to be awarded to an entity, a company, a person, or something. And the next one is going to be best in show. Because I walk around, I see a lot of stuff. Some stuff you've seen in prior years, some stuff you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? So there's a couple things I, I want to point out about best in show. But first, let's go to best networking. Now, before MD Expo ever kicked off, I got several emails and a telephone call because the guys over at Metasource wanted us, me and my crew, uh, people that are at my hospital, they wanted us to go with them and go hang out for a night. And they took us out Thursday night. We went to a uh, Dallas Stars game. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. They made sure that transportation, food, drinks, beautiful seats up in the box. I mean, don't get me wrong. Best networking is not about how much money you necessarily spend on the people that you're trying to entice. It goes much further than that. That night, they just wanted to hang out with us. They just wanted to talk with us, but they didn't necessarily talk business. They wanted to talk about who we were as technicians, what type of technology interests us, you know, stuff like that. They didn't, for the whole night, I had no real idea about what they did. I just knew who they were, their names, and I knew the stuff that they liked doing. Well, it was two nights later, and I was sitting down in the um, bar slash, I don't know, uh, foyer area of the large, um, the large hotel where this event was being taken place, and all the guys came in and they sat down with me and they sat there and we talked. And that time we actually did get to talk some business. Like, you know, what type of company are they? You know, what do they believe in? You know, what some ways that they could possibly help me. But they were sitting there and they were talking with me for probably a couple hours. The entire group of them. They didn't have to. They already took us out. They already satisfied that obligation if there ever was such a thing. But uh, they sat down and they wanted to just sit there and chill and talk, you know? They could have went back to their rooms and done whatever. I wouldn't have thought any differently of them. They're already cool guys. But the guys over at metasource.com, I'll leave the link down below, they actually, they did it right. You know, the first night, they took us out. Me and my crew, you know, we had a stressful week as it was leading up to that point. They took us out. We enjoyed ourselves. We had an excellent time. They didn't, like, give us a sales pitch or anything. They just let us all enjoy the time. We really had a lot of fun together. And uh, it was a couple days later that they actually did, you know, see me sitting down there. And, hey, Justin, what's going on? How you doing? And, you know, we had a couple drinks and we, we talked, you know, talked business. But uh, what an excellent way to do it. What a cool company, guys. Metasource, um, metasource.com. I'll leave it down below. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is Best in Show. Because... As you can imagine, at an MD Expo, at any medical expo, there's going to be some cool technology that comes out, and there's always going to be something that just really wows you. You're like, wow. And the, the device that I found, probably a lot of people just walked right on by because they didn't really think, what is that? What is that? You know, I understand that this is the first time that this product had ever been to a show, um, as far as I know. And, you know, as the developer of this product gets more renowned, more money, more backing. I'm sure that this is going to be absolutely fantastic. And what I'm talking about is the Smart Tank, and it's made by Witting Innovation. I'll leave the link down below. I actually had to search to try and find the product online because all these other major medical manufacturers had all their products, which is not even close to what I was searching for. And the Smart Tank is a, it's a capnography simulator and tester. <laughs> okay, so it's not just a simulator, it's also a tester. And I'm going to leave a video following this that's going to show you a lot about what it can do. Stay tuned and watch it because this device is absolutely fantastic. It's got every type of capnography um, device, end title CO2 device that you can think of in its data bank. 
and the PM procedure is saved in there. So you can literally click on it. You can go through the PM procedure, including passwords to access uh, calibration modes and stuff. And the gas cylinders have a RFID on the cylinder. So as you insert the cylinder into the side, it knows the gas mix, it knows the purity levels, and it knows whether or not that gas is compatible with that capnography device that you're going to be testing. How cool is that? I can actually give this device to a Biomed One and say, here, go do these 10 completely separate types of capnography devices, and they can do it. They can do it. I don't have to sit there and babysit anybody, and I don't have to worry about whether or not they did the test correctly because this device can export the test results to a file individually per device under test so I can save it to the work order, and there's all your test results. It's perfect. I love it. So anyway, that was my absolute best in show, but there is a couple follow-ups that I am just hungry to get my hands on, guys, and I am definitely talking about the Rigel or Regal Safe Test, the 50 and the 90 series, especially the 50 series, but I am only tossed up between the Safety Analyzer or the Unipulse 400. The Unipulse, did you guys see that in the video? It's tiny, a tiny little defib analyzer. And the fact that it's got all the jacks on the back so they're not getting dinged around and damaged because the jacks on the back is usually the safest point on an analyzer. It's not on the sides, it's not on the front, on the top, because I can set something like my tablet of paper on the top and a nice, big, beautiful display. I like that, that, uh, that Unipulse 400, man, but also that 50 series, you know, the 50 series just seemed like it was so reasonable, very competitive to the Dale safety analyzers that everybody's used to, only it's got a better screen, it's got a better display, and I don't have to think about what, what setting is going to do what, you know, the Dale had analog knobs, you had to flip-flop back and forth, this one here had beautiful display, nice walkthrough, Best in show is definitely going to go to Regal for the safe test or the Unipulse. They're, they're like this. I, I would love to try both of them. And, uh, but anyway, that's second place for the show. Stay tuned after this video. I'm going to have my experience with the Smart Tank. And uh, let me see what you guys think about it. It is an incredible little device. It was just sitting there. I just happened to walk by and I'm like, what is that? I have never seen one like that before. And I was blown away. Matter of fact, I would love to get one. I would love to run it through a variety of different devices with a Biomed 1 and see how well the Biomed 1 can handle doing a variety of capnography tests with little to no instruction other than what's on the device. What a cool video that would be. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the video following this and let me know what you think about my picks. Hey, guys, I think I just found a product that actually solves a problem that so many people keep asking me about is how do we test these these capnographers and so anyway I, this is a weird little device that I wasn't expecting to find here so let's take a look and see what it can do now here you can see Capna Stream 20 is hooked up to a device and it does have a touch screen correct? It does have a touch screen. Oh my phone's not picking it up too well. So it has automatic test sequences, and it's got an integrated manometer. Well, Herman needs one of these per campus. That's, okay. That's interesting. So uh, let's run through an uh, automatic sequence. Let's, okay, let's so see what it does. Okay, so this is just a demo sequence that we okay. have for the show. And you can pick. I'll show you. I mean, we've got all the different ones in there for the like TE modules. Okay. There's simple ones that are just the basic steps, and there's more complete ones that follow every step in the service manuals. And they can be tailored and customized. So you pick the one that you want, which I already have done, and then you hit start. Okay. I'll load up the sequence and get you ready to go. You can record the asset ID for the device. Okay. Because it does create test reports. So in the end, there's a test report. You can put. Does that name. connect to a printer or does it USB? A USB. Okay. USB. Then you get started. Okay. There's a little disclaimer. Uh, there's all sorts of information screens that you can put in there, so you don't have to get the user manual out to remember how to navigate or what the passwords are or anything like that. Things like you can check, uh, you know, this one here is just an example of checking the O rings on the water trap. 
or did you replace them? You know, that's a service step that you okay. may or may not do in your shop. And if you don't want it, we can take that step right out. But if you want it, then it's here, and you can say, I checked the O-rings, it's good, the fan is running. Now it's going to ask you to check the barometric pressure on the device, so you'd hit next. And on the device, which this is just an example, you would look up what it thinks the barometric pressure is. Okay, right. And over here it tells you what it should be, and you would enter it in and say, okay, mine's reading 741. So that zeroes it out? No, so that would just say you passed. Okay, but I there'd gotcha. be branching logic. So if, if your device is cali you could calibrate it, it would then if you failed it, it would say, okay, well now you need to go through these steps to calibrate it if it was serviceable. If it's okay. not, then it just fails. And all that's going to be like built in. Yeah, it's all built in, and we can wow. customize it to anything anybody wants. So I see it. It's also battery powered. It is battery powered. It'll last all day. Okay. Uh, right now I have a plug in, but it's battery powered. So I could take that exported log file and just upload it to my work order and, and close it. Okay. So then things like the sample flow rate test right here. Okay. It will go ahead and test the sample flow rate. It's all connected. You just have the sample line connected and then we hook the exhaust line up. Okay. And in about 10, 15 seconds, it will test the flow rate and for leaks all at one time. Okay. So you'll see this one passed. Its flow rate's 56.4 milliliters per minute, which is in spec, and there was no leak. And so that's done. And, and well, that these definitely are customizable, it. but it's all set in a sequence. So if you just pull up the sequence, it sets them all for you. Okay. And then I'm going to skip the next one. There's actually a leak down test, which I can't do on this monitor right this second. Okay. But it'd be a typical leak down where you pressurize it, hold it for 30 seconds or a minute, and then let it leak down and see if it drops pressure. Um, this screen lets you turn on the calibration gas. So if you watch over there, I'm going to turn this on. And you'll see the gas actually turns on. There it goes. Starts feeding the gas. And we actually minimize the gas use because so, this stuff's expensive. Yes. It is. So we actually measure the extra amount of gas it's letting out, and we throttle it to just enough for that gas monitor, okay. whatever that would be. So it, it uses the bare minimum amount of gas. And so here, you know, depending on the test, you would see usually you'd be on a different screen where you're checking the calibration, and then you say, yeah, it's within spec, it passes, and then okay. it moves on to the next test. And then you can do alarm detection and patient simulation. So let me go back. Now, I've seen that it, it's... Um, so that here's, it, here's the, here it is simulating patient breath. I'll there we go. That's what I wanted to see. So this, so one this, is, this is the one thing that breath. nobody simulates. Yeah, so we do that. Okay. And so we're doing this as part of an apnea test. And so yep. to get an apnea alarm, you have to have a stable wave first. And then you turn the wave off. And then you wait for your apnea alarm to show up. And so it will, it will tell, after 30 seconds, it will say, no breath, they've stopped breathing, and okay. then test the alarm. I can say, yeah, I've passed, I'm not gonna wait. And then the last one in this demo sequence is, it does uh, an occlusion alarm. And it actually, you see it, it thinks it's blocked now. Ah, it says it's clear okay. filter. Yeah. And if you wait long enough on this one, it'll actually say, um, occlusion alarm. Right. We've got at least 50. And then when you're done, it'll, gener it'll tell you the overall results. I passed all the tests. In this case, I passed all my tests. Okay. And then it'll generate a test report. And this is what's in the test report. It tells you the date, time, the gas you used, who did the test, which device you tested, all the information about. So that's exactly how it appears, on the, it appears on the log file? Okay. And you can download it for any USB-based device. So that would be like uh, your smartphone. You could hook the USB up, pull it off. There, it's on this side right here. Okay. Okay. So the cylinder just screws into the side. That's very, very clean. USB and the power. But yeah, you can hook it up. It's just a mass storage device, like a thumb drive. So you could plug it into your phone. You can plug it into the computer. Whatever works. It's got standoff feet on the well, bottom. That's nice. It, we designed it to work so it sets up like this on carts. Because yeah. a lot of people have carts they work on. And so you just so I was checking the back to see if there's any fans or anything on the back, but I see I see what you guys. These fans. We don't need them. They're going away in the next the next revision of the machine. So is this on the market right now? We are just launching it. Okay. 
Interesting. So this is our first look. It is. Excellent. The smart tank. Smart tank. Capnography simulator I, I and tester. Out. So in the test sequence, um, we know what gas you should be using. Okay. And these bottles have RFID tags that tell you what the gas is. So it makes sure you use the correct gas every time. If you have the wrong gas in, it'll tell you. Okay, so those are special that they get from you guys. Uh, yeah, you guys. buy the whole top bottle from this. Okay. And it'll be the same market price as everything else. We're not going to take that. So it would know if you got the wrong cylinder based Correct. on the model well, that you're choosing? Well, then in the test report, it even tells you the lot number of the gas, the expiration date of the gas, exactly what's wow. in the model. I mean, all that just dump, gets dumped in the report. Interesting. So have you guys done like a cost analysis of your gas versus another one because you guys say uh, you minimize the, yeah, the blow-by? Okay. I, I haven't put numbers to it, but you know, when you open a regulator up and put it into the little bag pouch, you know, and because you have to get it down to room pressure. So I don't know if you've ever done it. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. You just have that open. You might be pushing 200 milliliters out. It's it's usually cruising. Yeah. yeah. And this thing only uses 50, 57 milliliters is what this one is. So we're probably using at most 60 milliliters. Okay. Which is what a third of what you'd be using normally. Interesting. All right, guys. And then it does the test so quick, usually that it's just fast at getting the results. You know. That's. I was not expecting to run into something like this. That solves the problem of how do we test all these end tidal CO2 devices that are everywhere at every bedside. So here we go. We have uh, we have an actual simulator that you can throw on your cart with a gas that will self-recognize and it adjusts its wave its uh, flow rates according to the device that's entered into the template and you just export your log, you throw it in, attach it to your work order, and you're good. Interesting. All right, guys, thanks for watching.